is the man who's caused the Prime Minister's latest headache. A casual John Burko, all concerned this morning. So, so, I really feel you ought to get yourself some coffee or tea. I did offer to buy you all coffee and tea, but you declined my kind offer. He was uncharacteristically quiet about his decision, but the government can't bring back its withdrawal deal for another vote in the Commons unless it is substantially different. His rulings infuriated some who were getting ready to vote for Theresa May's deal. 17.4 million people who voted for Brexit, the majority of the people in the country, will be absolutely furious. I think there's a major constitutional crisis with us. The people voted to leave, and because of obscure parliamentary precedents going back to the 1604, we're going to prevent that occurring. The Speaker drew on parliamentary precedent going back 400 years to make his ruling. But despite what he said, the government plan is still to try and get another vote in the Commons. But it is the case that the Speaker's ruling yesterday raises the bar, uh, and we need to see what is different uh, as we approach uh, the next vote. And clearly, if Members of Parliament themselves are changing their vote, that does suggest that circumstances have changed. Today, Ministers spent an hour and a half talking about what to do next on Brexit, and there was disagreement around the Cabinet table. But the Government will ask the EU for a delay beyond March the 29th. Not surprisingly on the continent, they are even more baffled. I wasn't familiar with the rules of British parliamentary procedure from the 17th century, said the German Chancellor, and her Europe minister was sounding lukewarm about any request for a delay. I expect uh, clear and precise proposals of the British government why such an extension is necessary. With all the power of his office, the Speaker's thrown another barrier in the way of Brexit, a process Downing Street today described as a crisis. And no one knows how it'll be resolved.